Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera. Apa khabar? For this week, we're going to learn about new product development. As usual, I would like to revisit the previous week's lesson which focus on product, service, brand. For product, you need to understand the definition, the classification, the decision. For the classification, product can be divided into two, consumer product, industrial product. Consumer product is coming from consumer market, industrial product is coming from business market. For the decision, organizations need to make decisions on product or service, product line as well as product mix. On the other hand, since the definition of service is quite different as compared to product, you need to understand the definition, the characteristic, the additional strategies that need to be used by service firm to enhance its performance. Uh, last week, I kind of relate the strategies to the classification. The last one is brand. You need to understand the management and development of brand in the organization. So overall, last week, we focus on the decisions made by the organization relating to product and brand, service and brand. For this week, we are going to focus on the decision made by the organization relating to new product. So, paling penting sekali, tolong fahamkan the important points for this chapter. Ada empat. But we are going to look into one, two, three. The last one is going to be discussed in the forum. Tiga important points in this chapter include Pertama, how companies find and develop new product. Second, eight processes in new product development. Three, four stages in product life cycle. Dan yang paling penting sekali ialah setiap life cycle itu ada marketing strategis yang tersendiri kerana okay, yang phase yang pertama berbeza. Jadi sebab itulah ada marketing strategis dia. Uh, stage yang kedua berbeza sebab itu ada marketing strategis dia. Stage ketiga pun berbeza ada marketing strategis dia. Stage keempat juga berbeza ada marketing strategis dia. Okay. So, let's look at the first important point in this chapter which is how company find and develop new product. Kita letak muka kat sini dan kita pergi kepada slide yang seterusnya. Okay, so if the company decided to uh, develop a new product, they need to know whether they are able to develop the product by themselves or they need to buy the product from outside. So if they are not able to develop by themselves, they can always acquire atau kita panggil acquisition. Acquisition, okay? So you can acquire new product by buying a new company by purchasing patent or by buying license. So it's up to the organization whether they want to buy or they want to develop. But when it comes to buy, it's acquire new product. If they think that they have enough capacity, they have enough resources, if they have enough expertise, they have enough capital, so they can go for new product development. So they can uh, modify the, the existing product, they can do some uh, improvement, and they can also develop a uh, standalone new product 
Okay. Uh, based on the new product development in the organization. So, settle. The first important point in this chapter, the company can find and develop the new product by acquiring. Bila kita nak acquire, kita boleh beli kita boleh beli syarikat, kita boleh beli license, kita boleh beli patent atau you can also have your own uh, research and development in the organization. Yang kedua, ada terkeluar terus. Yang kedua, the eight processes in new product development. Okay. So these are the stages in new product development that you need to seperti biasa understand. So I'm going to explain it uh, briefly, okay? However, uh, the most important point is you need to also have your own example that you probably can get from the website, from the book relating to the new product development process. Okay, but I also uh, will give you some examples. For the first step in your product development is idea generation. So, kalau kita nak buat sesuatu, kita bermula dengan idea. Okay, that's why many of the people dulu-dulu uh, uh, kata angan-angan mak jenin kan. But angan-angan, that angan-angan is actually idea. So, based on the ideas, you are able to develop a new product. So, of course, your idea uh, can come from internal sources or external sources. Okay, ini yang kita akan bincangkan. Okay, kita pergi. So, sources of new product, internal, external. So, what is internal and what is external? Uh, dalam kata mudahnya ialah internal ada di dalam syarikat, external ada di luar syarikat. Internal dalam syarikat, it can refer to the top management, it can refer to your staff, it can refer to uh, your own research and development, it can uh, refer to your own expertise, engineers, researchers, okay? So, everybody inside the organization uh, can contribute to the idea generation for new product development. Uh, ini yang telah dilakukan oleh Facebook dan juga Twitter di mana mereka memberi peluang kepada pekerja-pekerja mereka untuk uh, menghasilkan idea mereka sendiri dengan memberikan one or two days off. Okay, dia bagi masa kepada employees tu untuk uh, take off daripada rutin kerja untuk mereka Dapatkan idea-idea baru yang boleh diimplement di dalam syarikat. So, these are the thing that you, if one day you become a businessman or businesswoman, you can also take this kind of approach and do it with your own stuff. Or you become a manager, you can try to submit this kind of idea. Ini pun idea juga, okay, to your top management because normally, okay, we can have ideas at the most uncommon place. Kalau saya dekat dalam pandas, it's easy for me to get idea. So, this is the thing that you can also try to do in your organization. Facebook and Twitter also have this kind of approach where they encourage their own staff to generate the ideas by giving them a break time from the daily routine in the office. Untuk external sources, as I told you earlier, it is uh, the people outside or the parties outside the organization. Ini telah dilakukan oleh Lego. Okay, Lego, they try to get the ideas from their own customer. Jadi kita pergi dekat website ni supaya you can get a clear picture Ha, ni Cisco. Nanti ni pun ada juga. Saya akan terangkan sekejap lagi. Okay. If you like to play with Duplos, you go to Lego website. Lego submit ideas. Okay. So, you can submit your ideas here. Submit idea. Okay. You can log in if you have uh, account or you can create account if you don't have any account yet. Okay. So, 
by doing this, Lego is able to harvest the ideas from the customers. And what did uh, the company do? They try to have voting system, okay? So the, the other users can vote for the most innovative ideas inside the website. So this definitely will encourage a lot of people to submit the ideas and engage with the uh, existing ideas that have been submitted. And of course, ini bukan saja uh, dapat memberikan uh, saya dapat kata sekejap eh? dan saya nak masuk ni balik. Okay. Ini bukan sahaja memberikan uh, satu uh, uh, we can say strategi yang berguna kepada Lego, ianya juga dapat uh, menarik ataupun dapat meningkatkan engagement between uh, Lego and its own customer. So because as I already mentioned earlier in the class, sama ada online ataupun tidak online, okay. Um, customer engagement is very important. So, how you want to engage the customer in the process is by having them to uh, give some ideas on how you can improve your product. Remember, customer engagement is very important. And besides that, you can also try to harvest their own idea, their ideas, which can be adopted because at the end, the one who will buy your product is your own customer and their ideas are very important so that you can adopt your ideas towards the new product that you want to sell in the market. Selain daripada itu, you can also try to uh, get the ideas from the customer, uh, sorry, from the competitors. So what you can do is you can purchase their product and you can try to do some an analysis you can try to look into how they develop the product, what kind of technology. So, itu semua adalah sangat penting. Dan selain daripada itu, saya juga nak, uh, saya juga nak, nak, apa, uh, address di sini. Supplier juga adalah salah satu parti yang penting untuk awak generate idea because they are the one who know the market trends. So when they know the market, they, they need to know the market trends because they want to find their own customers. So when they want to find their own customers, they need to know the market trends. What are the most popular trends now? What are the most popular technology now? So they need to give you some advice. So when they give you some advice or when they want to give you uh, any advice, this will help you to generate ideas and to develop your own product. So many of the companies, they actually able to get ideas from the suppliers. So, kalau awak tengok dekat sini, customer, competitor, distributor, suppliers, or outside design firms. So, these are all the external sources that you can get uh, the ideas from. Then, uh, saya tadi tebut Cisco, okay, so crowdsourcing. So, this involves inviting broad communities of people. So, you try to get the public to contribute Kalau crowdsourcing, uh, some of the crowdsourcing, dia macam dia bagi duit kan? Okay, but this one crowdsourcing, dia nak bukan bagi duit, okay? Dia nak awak bagi ideas. So, they try to uh, get as many ideas as possible from the community. It can be the researchers, it can be uh, employees, it can be customer, any anyone. Okay, they can try to to uh, contribute the ideas. Dan Cisco ada satu platform yang dia telah buat untuk dia allow this kind of idea generation. So, sebab itulah ianya sangat penting kerana uh, ideas, uh, even simple ideas also can uh, can contribute to the development of a very high performance of product. So, but you need to remember, tidak semua idea itu adalah uh, berbaloi untuk kita develop. So that's why it's very important for you to do screening. You need to screen based on RWW screening framework. Okay, so but you need to understand, okay, 66% uh, of new product from established company 
fail within two years. Kenapa benda tu terjadi? Sebab uh, there are many reason why it, it fail. It can be because of the advertising. It is must. Uh, it can be because of the wrong segmentation. It can be because of the poor design of the product. Okay, so that's why. Bila as even established company can fail within two years, sixty six percent of them, okay, fail. So that's why it's very important for you to really uh go through one step. You you do not have to go through all the steps. However, you need to get the ideas and you need to make sure that okay your ideas get screen your ideas you can get. Nanti kita akan terangkan lagi lah sebelum uh, selepas ni cuma nak bagi tahu dengan awak. It's very important for you to really look into ideas and try to see the potential first. Okay, so that's why you are using RWW screening framework. Is it real? Is it real? Is it something that you can do? Uh, sebelum ni saya pernah cakap pasal kereta terbang tu kan? It possible. It is possible. However, uh, is it? Can we win? Can we? And is it worth doing at this point of time? So, benda ni we need to know because sometimes it the potential of the product is not there because of the time, because of the timing of the launch or probably because of the technology or probably because of the target market. Okay, so that's why you need to understand that you have to do screening. You can have as many ideas as possible. That's why you can do crowdsourcing. That's why you can get uh, the, you can get the uh, ideas from your employees. You can get the ideas from your competitors or your customers. However, you need to screen it so that you can get the best ideas to be forwarded for the uh, next processes. Okay, so here, uh, ini adalah step yang ketiga. From idea, kita nak translate tu jadi product concept. So, bila saya kata product concept, it is a detailed version of the idea in a meaningful consumer terms. So, bila dari uh, bila ada product concept tu, dia adalah one another layer lagi di mana idea tu dia dah uh, uh, the customer can see what are the functions, customer can uh, can see what are the attributes of the product, Sebut saya dah sebut dah sebelum ni dalam chapter-chapter yang sebelum dia Okay And uh, product image Sorry Product image is also important Because it's actually uh, represent How the customer look at the product In actual punya potensi Okay So uh, if you see certain product concept It can reflect the product image that the customer would like to see. So, ini adalah, dan bila kita dah ada product concept, kita kena test. And, when you want to test, you would like to test the product with the target market or the target customer that you have selected. Because, sometimes, the product is good, but the target market is actually wrong. So that's why you need to test the concept first. Is it suitable for the specific target market that you have selected? Awak nampak kereta merah tu, itu adalah Tesla, electric punya car. Okay. So the, uh, some of the companies, they can do survey. Okay, when you, kenapa saya duduk atas ni? Saya duduk bawah balik lah. Okay. So, some of the companies, they can do survey because they would like to see what are the acceptance of the customer towards the product. Yang penting, paling penting sekali ialah the acceptance of the target market that they, that they have selected. Okay, Tesla, saya, uh, saya ulang balik. So, they also try to look into what are the acceptance of the customer towards the, uh, towards the product concept of the Tesla electric car that they have Uh, develop sebab test uh, electric car ni dia ada dia punya karakteristik dia sendiri so is it something that the customer wants so these are the things that the organization need to take into consideration seterusnya ok so ini telah ber uh, saya belah tak tahu nak duduk mana ha, ni saya nak duduk ok saya duduk sini lah tengah-tengah 
Okay, so now we have come to the stage where you have to really look into your marketing strategies. So, saya tak payah uh, nak terangkan terlampau panjang. When it comes to marketing, definitely you need to know your target market. You need to know your value proposition. Awak setiap kali je nampak marketing okay. You have your own target market and you have your own value proposition. See, dua benda ni. Saya sebenarnya saya sebenarnya tak baca pun. Okay, tapi memang saya walaupun tak adalah depan ni kan. Okay, tapi sebenarnya saya tak baca. Uh, maksudnya saya tak melihat pun dah tak nampak pun benda ni. Okay, when it comes to marketing, it's about your target market and value proposition. Uh, and the last one is sales, market, share and marketing mix. Ah, ini saya baca. Sales, market, share and marketing mix. So, you, uh, saya tak ingat pada kelas yang keberapa, saya pernah bagi tahu market share tu adalah berapa. Okay, for example, ini example saja eh. Awak jual, uh, dalam Malaysia ada 20% uh, pasaran yang menjual uh, menjual bag kita panggil Nike. Contoh, ni contoh saja sebab saya nak dapat bag Nike, saya beli Shopee tadi. Jadi saya guna contoh Nike lah. 20% pasaran di Malaysia ialah Nike. Uh, 30% ialah Adidas. Uh, 20% ialah uh, lagi bag apa dia? Apa-apa bag lah uh, ataupun Izati bag. Lagi 30% arti bag. Ha, itu nama saya, nama manja saya. Okay, so you can decide on the portion of market share that you want to have in the market. Saya nak 30% semua produk itu adalah produk saya. Ada dalam market. So, you can have your own statement of marketing strategy which include target market. Ingat, marketing je mesti target market. Tak ada benda lain dah. Mesti juga value proposition. Because you want to, how do you want to position your product in the market? You want to be looked as something luxury item. Or you want to be looked as something affordable. Or you want to be looked as something which is uh, uh, high quality but with low price. So it's up to you. And the other the other uh, aspect or elements that need to book inside uh, this statement is your market share, your sales, how many that you want to have, and marketing mix. Marketing mix ada apa? Ada berapa? Okay, you need to remember. So, tak best duduk tengah, duduk tepi balik, sebab kita nak gerak. Okay. Business analysis. Uh, yang ini, sorry, sebab dalam business analysis ni, Okay, uh, the most important thing is you have to review the sale cost and profit projection for a new product. Okay, so when you want to review the sales, the profit, uh, sorry, the sales cost and profit, you are actually try to analyze the attractiveness of the new product. Saya pernah beritahu dalam kelas, Uh, some of you, you see the attractiveness of orang adalah berdasarkan rupa ataupun bentuk badan ataupun daripada duit ataupun daripada kepandaian. So, that's how you analyze the attractiveness of individual, attractiveness of people. But when you want to analyze the attractiveness of a product, you need to look into the sale cost and profit projection. Okay, so that's why uh, what you need to do ini the process dia, okay. You need to review the similar product sales history. Because produk tu, dia ada dia ada juga produk yang seperti meri, seperti produk new product tadi, okay. So, you need to know, okay, the similar product to your new product, what kind of sales that you can get. Ha, benda tu awak kena tengok dulu. Selain daripada itu, you also need to do market survey. Sebab, Uh, you need to see uh, the sales that you can get and what are the profit that you can estimate. After you have done with the analysis of the similar product and you have conducted the market survey, what you can do is you can estimate the minimum and maximum sales. Yelah, sebab awak dah tengok dah. Kalau produk sebelum ni, sales dia adalah banyak ni. Dan awak juga dah tengok market survey, awak dah tahu, okay. Memang ramai orang akan beli produk ni. 
So now the second step that you can, uh, you need to do is you can estimate the minimum and maximum sales that you can get. Yang ketiga, you have to prepare the sale forecast. So how many product that you estimate to sales to uh, sorry to sell but to sell within a month within a uh, six month within a year seterusnya uh, you have to estimate the expected cost and profit so when you have sell certain product of course you as you must estimate how much profit that you can get Okay, and the last one, analyze the financial attractiveness. So, itulah financial attractiveness tadi ialah sale, cost and profit production. So, uh, kalau untuk marketing tadi, saya kata dengan awak, marketing is about target market value proposition. Kalau business analysis, because you want to see the attractiveness of the product or attractive, attractiveness of a business. Okay, so attractiveness can be uh, measured based on the sale, cost and profit production. Seterusnya, okay, this is where you develop the product. Sebab tadi idea jadi konsep. Jadi konsep tu awak kena test dulu. Okay, dan konsep yang awak test tadi dia ada product image yang terhasil. Sebab uh, the customer will have their own uh, image that they think of a certain product, how they will be produced. Macam mana bentuk dia nanti, macam mana function, dia dah ada image dia. Okay, oh, product ni akan jadi macam ni, oh, product ni akan jadi macam ni. Itu yang start yang yang ke depan-ke depan tadi. For product development, uh, this is where you develop the product from concept into physical product. So, uh, if before this you have tasks if you have, you have touched the concept and you think that it is uh, suitable for the target market that you have chosen, now it is the time for you to translate the concept into the actual product so that you can sell it in the market. Some of the company, they will do test marketing. Uh, jadi, tapi cuma uh, it is worth noting that not all companies are able to do test marketing because you have to allocate some amount of money. It's quite expensive to do this. Okay. Di mana you will test uh, the product in a specific environment. Bila saya kata specific environment, sama ada dia akan di uh, di test di dalam satu store yang dia, macam dia lab, lab tau. Store tu dia lab dia. Makmal store, dia macam, it's like actual store, tapi dia bukan actual store. Cuma sebab dia nak tengok Uh, they would like to see the acceptance. They would like to see uh, the. They would like to see the uh, reaction of the consumer. Uh, di dalam that uh, store lab tadi. Ataupun dia juga boleh buat dalam satu kita panggil uh, sebab online pun boleh juga. Okay, stimulated online environment. Jadi dalam stimulated online environment ni sama juga dengan lab tadi. Kalau lab tu dalam physical kedai yang macam seolah-olah kedai dan dia juga dalam satu macam buat uh, dalam satu online environment yang seperti online environment which allow people, which allow the marketers to see the reaction of the consumer towards certain product dan tapi uh, saya ulang sekali lagi tak semua company yang buat kerana ianya agak mahal so bila saya kata agak mahal ok see this one uh, if you think that uh, you do not have enough Uh, money, you do not have enough uh, you do not have enough cost to cover the task marketing so you do not have to do this and commercialization okay so commercialization is the last part in new product development so this is when you want to launch your product however, there are certain questions that you need to answer yang pertama, when to launch? When pada waktu bila? So, saya pergi kat sini. Itu adalah dalam. Okay. Uh, we, when to launch? If you think that the new the launch of the new product will affect the existing sales that you already have in the organization, awak kena delay. Jangan 
launch produk di mana bila awak launch produk itu produk itu akan mempengaruhi sales di ada produk that you have you need to delay jangan launch selagi ianya memberi efek kepada produk-produk yang lain punya sales because yang uh, ruginya adalah siapa company yang rugi sebab walaupun uh, awak keluarkan dia produk tapi efek kepada yang lain so you will get the uh, uh, kerugian selain daripada itu ok uh, if you think that the product should be improved you need to delay jangan launch dulu you need to make sure that the product is at its best performance before you can launch the product selain daripada itu uh, ada satu soalan ok saya saya tahu tak boleh jawab pun. Kalau saya tanya pun tak boleh jawab kan. Awak jawab dalam hati je lah eh. If the, uh, if the competitors launch a new product, bila adalah waktu yang sepatutnya awak juga launch new product? Saya jawab dalam hati. Okay, saya tolong jawab kan. You need to launch immediately. Okay, jangan biarkan competitors tu launch product dulu. So, you need to be the first one to launch a product. So, sebab itulah uh, many of the companies, they really uh, uh, compete with each other to launch a new product because you need to understand customer are looking for the new product in the market. They would like to be the first. So, when they want to be the first one to get the new product, so siapa yang launch dulu, dia akan grab that, that product first. So, If your competitors are launching a new product now, you also need to launch as soon as possible. However, kalau produk awak tu tadi tak at the best performance, jangan launch lagi. Kalau produk awak tadi boleh bagi efek kepada produk yang lain, jangan launch lagi. Okay? So, second question, where to launch? So, you can launch uh, whether you want to launch at specific country or you want to launch at the international market. So, you need to to consider all of these things you, because it relates or it uh, affects your cost it affects the timing okay so these are the things that you need to look into and the last one plan market rollout plan market rollout ni maksudnya bil, maksudnya bila lah awak nak launch kan okay how do you want to launch it do you want to launch it virtually ah, sekarang ni memang terpaksa virtually because uh, because of this uh, uh, pandemic uh, pandemic uh, which is happening now okay so that's why you need to uh, find the alternative way to launch your product so how do you plan to launch or to introduce your product so there are many ways on how do you want to introduce your product some of the people they probably get the press conference Uh, so that people get to know their product. So, there are many ways that can be uh, considered by the organization. So, ni saya rasa tak perlu. Okay, just terus kepada the last part. Okay, which is the four product life cycle. Kita ada empat eh. Introduction, growth, maturity and decline. Okay, so these are the four product life cycle that you need to understand because this is not only important for this subject which is marketing it also uh, can be used for the other subject uh, because it is one of the popular concept relating to product so uh, but this one kita ada tambah lagi satu product development okay sebab waktu product development there there is no sales at all that's why you need to do the new product development process because during this time you are actually you do not get the money but you have to spend the money see zero sales and you need to invest you need to invest on research and development or and if you choose to acquire the product you have to spend money to buy patent you need to spend money to buy license you need to spend money to buy a company okay so this is the stage where you have to spend a lot of money So, when it comes to introduction, so slow sales and non-existent profit because this is where you would like 
to introduce to the market that you have this product. So, uh, the sale is quite slow because people do not know the existence of your product. Okay, jadi dia ada marketing strategy dia yang dikena gunakan. Ah, yang ni, yang ni yang yang paling penting sekali because I think it's easy for you to understand the nature of each cycle. Kalau awak dengar perkataan introduction, mestilah tak ada sale, baru nak kenal. Awak kan baru lahir kan? Awak baru lahir, siapa kenal awak? Nama pun tak tahu. Mak awak kata nak bagi nama apa eh? Uh, macam sedap je Nur Izzati. Uh, oh, okay. Orang baru nak kenal, baru nak tahu. Uh, lelaki ke perempuan? So, dia tengok. So, this is introduction part. Orang baru nak kenal. Orang tak kenal lagi. Sale pun tak ada. Tak buat untung pun. Kalau masa kecil, awak tidur je kan? Okay. So, kalau growth. Bila meningkat dewasa awak anak dara. Okay. So, anak jejak, anak jejaka. Anak teruna. Okay. So, when you are, when you are growing. Ada, you have the increasing profit. Okay. Because you starting to get the market acceptance. You enter into the university. Ah, saya masukkan sikit-sikit pasal uh, life. Because it's easy for you to relate between product and life. Okay. So, life tu adalah diri awak sendiri. Product adalah product. Okay. So, the same thing you go into... Uh, the university, you are being accepted by your friends, you are being accepted by your school friends, by your uh, lecturers, okay, see? The same thing with product, okay, you start to gain market acceptance. So, when you get market acceptance, that is when you get the profit. And when it comes to maturity, maturity, mature, uh, okay? So, when you be, uh, when you become matang, mature, uh, you started to get a slow sale of growth. Dia dah, dia dah macam agak stable macam tu je. Dia nak kata tinggi pun tidak, turun pun tidak. Dia macam stable. Okay. Macam kalau saya, umur umur saya tit, okay. Uh, umur saya ni pun saya dah start macam nak, saya tak rasa tit. Umur saya ni stable pun tak juga kot. Dalam 40 plus ke atas mungkin lah stable. Okay. So when, when it comes to maturity, you cannot, see the increasing uh, yang kita boleh kata terlampau menaik dia punya keuntungan dia. Okay, you can see that you have a very slow sales of growth and profit agak mungkin decline sedikit okay, here and there because uh, people do not see the spark in you. Okay, so that's why lah ada orang kata man starts at 40 Okay, itu dia punya 40 lah. Saya pun tak tahu. Okay, but uh, for product, uh, you can see the the slow sales growth. And decline, sales fall off and profit is dropping. So, when profit is dropping, you need to consider whether you have to cut off the operation or whether you want to change your operation or you want to do something else. So, ini yang kita nak tengok. Okay, so see here this one. Introduction, slow sale growth, little or no profit, high distribution and promotion expenses. Ah, uh, Ini marketing strategi yang awak kena buat. You have to do a lot of promotion. You have to do a lot of marketing efforts. Because when you, uh, when you are, okay, when you are, when the product at the introduction phase, when no one knows about the product, you have to do promotion. Dan uh, apa yang company akan buat? Dia akan buat uh, press conference. Saya pernah bagi tahu sebelum ni, okay? Dan kalau dalam uh, minggu, saya tak ingat minggu ke berapa kita akan belajar marketing mix. Okay, di, di situ yang awak akan tahu yang awak boleh do. You can do advertising. You can do public relation. You can do sales promotion. So, there are a lot of things that you can do. Okay, ada lima kalau saya tak silap eh. Okay, nanti itu yang paling penting yang awak kena faham. So, just to tell you that, you have to invest more on that. Sales promotion, advertising, public relation, uh, personal selling. Okay, so you can choose any of them or you can choose all of them in order for you to promote your product. But at this phase, it's going to be massive amount of promotion uh, activities that you have to do. Growth stage. Okay, sales is increasing. 
Okay, profit increase and then uh, consumer started to know about your product. They don't really know. So, uh, the marketing strategies that you can do is you try to low to lower your price. Uh, sebab itulah kita do sales promotion. Okay, because you would like to uh, make them excite, uh, to excite them to buy your product. So, these are the marketing strategy that you can do in growth stage. Maturity stage. Okay, this one. When they are slow down in sales, sebab awak kan bila, bila kita dah matang, kita dah start tak ada rasa nak berkawan. Okay, berkawan ya. So, uh, bukan rasa tak, bukan tak ada rasa nak berkawan. Awak dah jadi relax. So, bila awak relax, you already have many suppliers around you. Awak dah, ramai, awak dah ramai kawan dah. You have many suppliers that back up you. Tapi masalahnya sekarang ialah ada substitute product. Bila ada substitute bermaksud uh, copy product that try to copy you. Okay, because you are already matured, you already uh, exist in the market for such a long time, so people start to copy you. So, this will uh, this will kita nak panggil apa ya this will uh, ask the company to increase promotion and R&D to support sales and profit so di sinilah nanti okay the when it comes to R&D you have to do some uh, improvement to the existing product. You have to do some modification to the existing product. And you also need to increase the promotion. So, promotion tadi tu, pada waktu uh, growth, dia tak perlu terlampau terlampau do a lot of promotion. But they can lower down to excite the the customer to buy the product. Tapi dalam introduction, you have to do a lot of uh, promotion activities untuk memperkenalkan. Tapi dalam maturity ni, awak kena increase promotion sebab dalam satu, sampai satu tahap bila awak static macam tu people started to forget about you. So when people started to forget about you it's time for you to increase promotion so that they can remember back what is your product is all about. So sebab itulah saya masih ingat lagi saya pernah bagi tahu satu contoh tentang ayam goreng MACD. Okay sampai satu tahap Okay, dia dah buat satu bus marketing. Okay, the bus marketing ni dia amplify, amplify dia punya effect tu. Effect kepada marketing tu tadi dia jadi lagi uh, boleh reach lagi larger audience. Jadi bus marketing yang dia buat sampai kan, dia bukan dia buat bunyi macam macam dia makan uh, MACD tu crunch. Ha, ni sekarang kalau waktu puasa, kan sedap bunyi-bunyi ayam MACD awak bayangkan. Kruk, kruk macam tu. Okay, because they would like to... Uh, Make people remember that they have ayam dekat MACD. Bukan setakat burger je dekat MACD, ada ayam juga. Uh, so, so these are the things that has been used by the organization. Bila dah sampai mature tu, orang-orang dah matang ni macam relax. Oh, tak ada benda nak buat, relax lah. Okay, ramai kawan kan, ramai supplier kan. Okay, uh, lepas tu ramai orang jealous kan. Uh, jadi, ramai lah awak punya substitute product tu. Jadi, dia macam relax. So, bila relax, orang start to lupakan dia... Uh, Dah tak tahu pun dia wujud. So, you have to increase promotion and you have to increase R&D by modifying the existing product, by modif uh, by improving the existing product as well as you can also introduce a new product. Okay? You can introduce a new product so that uh, it can help you to uh, increase your brand image. Okay. So, modification can be used uh, sama ada awak nak modify Bila awak nak modify tu awak ada 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 apa uh, Awak boleh dapatkan target market yang baru Or you can go for International market So you can modify your market Because When you uh, At the maturity level You have to do something to make sure that You are moving Okay You do not want to be static there and people forget about you. So, what you can do, you can modify the market, you can go to international market, you can go for uh, different target market. You can also try to modify the product by doing the R&D. You can uh, modify the existing product, you can have a new 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 product. 
you can also modify the marketing mix when i say marketing mix you can try to modify the price you can modify the distribution channel if before this you only have the uh, is, uh, you have the physical store you can also try to consider having online store dan salah satu benda saya tak tahu kalau ada yang kawan kasi kat facebook saya dah start tengok yang live facebook kan okay uh, siapa nak beli lock 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 uh, saya dah lock 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 tu okay because It's one of the ways so kita nampak benda tu secara online. So, you can see all people pakai. Oh, so rasanya kalau dia pakai tu buat, aku pun buat ni. Okay. So, they are switching from physical store. They are having online store which is dalam Facebook. Facebook live tu tadi. Dan orang-orang macam saya ni rasa macam, oh, okay, we have this kind of channel that we can use to buy to buy the product. So, kita akan start guna ni pula. So, kalau sebelum ni awak kat kedai je kan, peace, butik peace. Butik peace tu pun ada dia punya online channel dia juga, dia buat. Dia kata, okay, dalam masa tiga minit, siapa nak sembilan ringgit saja. So, kita pun, so we bid for that, we we lock that item so that we can buy the product. So, to tell you that, you have to be creative when it comes to maturity stage of the product. So, decline. So, when it comes to decline, bila kita dah tua kan, sama ada kita maintain the product. So, that maintain, when, when bila kita kata maintain the product tu, because we we still see the potential. We can harvest the product, we can harvest uh, the profit that we can get from that, or we can just drop it. Because you think that there's no profit that you can gain, gain pula, gain anymore. Okay, so ini adalah summary dia. Awak boleh tengok sendiri. Saya rasa benda saya cakap tadi semua dah ada dalam ni. Tak perlu saya nak terangkan lagi. Okay, sekarang dah 46 minit. Okay, <coughs> so uh, sale promotion, use heavy sales, uh, reduce to take advantage of heavy consumer demand, increase to encourage brand switching and reduce to minimal level. Uh, jadi marketing strategi yang terakhir ni dia dah, dia dah kurangkan. Okay, to reduce the marketing strategy because they do not see the potential anymore. Okay, uh, sebab uh, this will help the organization to do their marketing strategy. First, they need to know what is the cycle of their product. Whether it is at introduction whether it is at growth or whether it is at maturity or it is decline. So, when they know the cycle that their products belongs to, so they don't have any problem to choose the marketing strategy. Okay? Jadi, apa yang kita dah secara mudahnya, apa yang awak telah belajar hari ini ialah, new product development is one phase. Another phase is introduction, growth, maturity and decline and each of the cycle will have its own marketing strategies which is suitable for them. Apa lagi? Okay, ni saya saya bagi tahu tadi uh, ini yang ketiga okay, ini sorry, yang keempat okay, yang ini saya akan bincangkan dalam forum okay, they are additional consideration relating to product and services contoh warranty pattern because you have to pattern your product to make sure that there is no substitute product. Maturity tadi ada substitute product kan? Okay so you have to pattern your product uh, Isu yang paling baru pasal VV Yusof okay. Uh, alamak saya takut saya pula kena saman. Okay. Tak uh, nak ceritanya ialah uh, to tell you that people can claim that you use their product. So, in order for you to make sure that your product is being protected, you have to put pattern them. Okay? Uh, and you have to consider the quality and the standards. And we have I ISO standards that we can comply to. Uh, and kalau kita nak uh, export barangan ke USA, okay? They are uh, standards that you have to go through. Yang very strict standard. Sebab itulah kalau... Uh, if you want to uh, if you want to export something you need to know uh, what are the rules and regulation of each country then uh, there's one company saya masih ingat lagi sampai sekarang okey dia kata once they dah dah comply all the standards dia dah export tak ada masalah because 
the standards are the most important thing yang dia kena comply dulu. Bila dia dah comply, sebab nak, terutama nak pergi US eh, because you know that they have a very strict rules and regulation relating to food uh, and the, uh, and and something which is related to that is very strict. Okay, so ini adalah perkara yang kita perlu consider. Okay, um, and whether you want to do standard standardization or customization, it's all depend on you. Or you want what kind of packaging labeling is very important for you to label your product because uh, people can sue you if something wrong happened to them after they consume your product. Okay, A custom values and laws. Of of course, we are we the the product okay have to comply with certain rules and regulation customs and laws okay so ini adalah additional consideration i do not want to really look into this because i would like to discuss this in the forum to have two ways communication with you so secara uh, ringkasnya apa yang kita belajar tadi ialah pertama how do you want to find and Develop the product Satu Kedua Eight processes In new product development So dalam new product development Okay Awak tak ada apa-apa uh, Awak sekarang ni tengah develop product And then you can go to the Next level Which is the product life cycle Four stages And each of the cycle They have their own market strategies Okay So that's all uh, I hope that you have a very good day uh, Thank you very much for everything Uh, kita ada lagi beberapa kelas yang kita akan habiskan okay and we will di we will discuss on that bye bye oh assalamualaikum oh sama sejahtera